to worry about anything. We seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And we don't got to worry about nothing else. I don't got to worry about what clothes I got to wear. Someone gave me this tie. Somebody gave me this shirt. I don't have to worry about no cars. I got a job. Someone had lent me their car for a few months. I don't got to worry about no money. Somebody paid a little piece of money in my, and I'm talking about, not a little piece. I'm talking about it has a comma in that. Somebody put a little money in my pocket. I don't got to worry about that. I don't got to worry about what I eat. Somebody had bought some food for me. Somebody took me out to dinner and paid for it. Don't got to worry about that. Don't got to worry about anything. The only thing I got to worry about is pleasing my God. And then we have our very own minister, our assistant pastor, who's going to bring in the word today. And he teaches us the practical things about how, how to work on your job so that you know how to spend your money, so you know how to do things practically to continue to serve the Lord. And we thank God for our very own minister here. And he'll be giving us this word about how we know how to serve God. So after the fearless praise, give a, a song. And then the next voice you hear is our very own minister.
Amen. Can the church say? And spread abroad the earth by himself. He was in the world. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And the world was made by him. We believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, God manifests in the flesh. Amen. And he came into the world that we may be freed from the curse of the law. That's right. And that we may be free from sin. And he also came into the world to fill us completely with his Holy Spirit. And in all that we receive him, he give us the power to become the sons and daughters of God. But I want to tell you today, just that alone is not good enough because Jesus himself told us in his word that we must first deny our own selves. That's right. See, the, the thing about a lot of people, they like Jesus for the things that he can do for them. Mm hmm but they don't want to self-sacrifice themselves to give up for his life. Amen. And Jesus said in the word that if, if any man would, would seek to, to, to save his life, he's going to lose it. That's right. And I want to tell you today, you ought to lose the game today. That's right. You know, before, before we can get renewed in Christ, we have to begin to take off those old things. Mm -hmm. And the Bible, the scripture tells us how to do it. It tells us to clean ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh That's and right. spirit. Amen. Amen. He said, I got to do that. Yes, you got to do it. That's right. He already told you what you got to do. Mm -hmm. He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for the remission of sins. And then you'll receive the what? The, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Ghost. That's right. That's right. Then you'll get the Holy Ghost. But a lot of people want the Holy Ghost, but they don't want to self-deny. Right. Mm. Right. Give me some of that Matthew 7 and, and 12 or 11. Uh, uh, you go over, Eric, you get me some of Matthew. We're going to talk in the word today. You go over to the ninth chapter of, of, of Matthew. Mm -hmm. We do want to honor the pastor here before we get started here. We want to honor, we're going to call the roll a little bit here. First, we want to honor the spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. who is the head of our lives and head of the church. I do want to honor my beautiful wife and my lovely family, my children, I appreciate them. Also want to honor the bishop, Bishop Jeffries, and all the host of elders, my leaders here at the True Church of God in Christ. I want to honor them as well today. Also want to honor the pastor here, Pastor Stacy Boy. He's the elder here. He's the senior pastor, if you want to call it that. He's a senior pastor here at this location. And we're located here at 1970 Old Alabama Road here in the city of Mableton. And we want to invite you to come out because we believe part of your salvation is assembling yourselves with the people of God. That's right. Uh, we, we do believe in reading your Bible at home and praying and all those things, and that is great, and we should do those things. But also, we should also be willing to communicate with those that are serving God. Mm -hmm. And we believe in serving God according to what the Word has said. That's right. So we're looking into the Scriptures today, and we're telling you that if you're going to follow Christ, there's some things that you must do. And the thing about following Christ is going to cause you to lose some things in your life. Mm -hmm. And some of those things that you lose in your life is the very things that you love. And, and the deacon was talking about earlier some of the things that he loved that he didn't want to give up. But he realized that in order to follow Christ completely, you got to give those things up. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Matthew 7 and 11 says here, uh, Brother Paul. Amen. Uh-huh. If you then, yes. being evil, uh -huh. know how to give good gifts unto your children. All right. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good gifts unto them that ask him? All right, read on. Therefore, mm -hmm. all things whatsoever ye would, whatsoever that all things should, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, mm -hmm. do ye even so to them. Do ye even so unto them. For this is the law and the prophet. Uh huh. Enter you in at the straight gate. See what what we got to do is we got to enter at the straight gate. That's mm -hmm. right. See the way that we're walking now. If we say we're of God, we we love God. We begin to walk in a new way. Mm -hmm. And and you hold nine and and uh, twenty seven mm -hmm. in that same book. Mm -hmm. He said, "Enter in at the straight gate." Mm -hmm. 
See, a lot of people in the time of Jesus, they was getting healed. They was getting all these things from Jesus. But when it all boiled down to it, it was only a few of them that really was willing to follow him. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus had more than just 12 disciples. That's right. He had about 80, 80 disciples walked away from him. When he began to talk about eating of his flesh and drinking his blood, and, and they couldn't understand it, they thought it was a hard thing. And he wasn't talking about the natural eating. Mm -hmm. He was talking about you taking on me and denying your own self. Right. That's right. You know, people start dropping like flies when Jesus tells you to give up some things. Yeah, that's true. Jesus tells you to give up some things in your life that you have been cleaving to for a long time. Jesus began to tell you to give those things up you begin to, to back away from him. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you today, don't back away from Jesus. Go all the way into Jesus. Amen. When he began to call some of his disciples, some of those disciples actually in the midst of working, some of them with their family, he said, deny yourself and follow me. Mm -hmm. And they had so much faith, they just dropped whatever they had and started following Jesus. Mm -hmm. And those same people that did that they were some of the greatest men on this earth. They was the ones that was responsible for writing the Bible, some of the Bible, mm -hmm. because they was willing to follow Jesus all the way. Not some of the way, but all the way. That's right. Enter in at the straight gate. Uh-huh. And broad it, enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. Wide is the gate. And broad is the way. See, people like this kind of way. Mm -hmm. Because this way, it allows you to do a lot of things uh, that, that you like to do. He said, now, broad is the way that leadeth, unto the, that leadeth to destruction, and many there, by, many there by which go in thereat. Uh-huh. Many there be. Uh-huh. Read that again. Yes, sir. Enter in at the straight gate. Enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. Yes, sir. That leadeth to destruction. Read. And many there be which go in thereat. Many. There be which go in thereat. Mm -hmm. You hold that, Brother Paul. Get me Proverbs 14 and 12. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 14 and 12. We're talking about self-denial today. Are you willing to deny oneself to follow Jesus? Mm -hmm. Amen. Proverbs 14 and... 12. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, give me some of that, Brother Paul. See what that says. There is a way. There is there is a way. Which seems right unto a man. See, this is what we call in the New Age relative truth. Well, what relates to you, what is good for you is okay. Mm -hmm. Follow your heart. Anybody that follows their heart is not regulated by the word of God, is not wise. Right. Follow your heart. Do what feels right to you. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something. Your heart will deceive you. That's right. Your feelings, our feelings will deceive us. You know, you can't go by your feelings alone. No. Sometimes you're up, you're down, you're sad, you're happy, and you do all these things according to your feelings, you're going to mess up. Yeah. Right. Right. And as you was listening to us on, on last week, I believe, we was talking about King Herod. King Herod was so excited that he began to put his mouth out there too soon. Yeah, yeah. And what happened was when he said, you, you can have anything that you ask for, and when, when she asked him for it, he became sorrowful. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he was too excited. Let me tell you something. Don't do a whole lot when you're too excited or when you're too upset. Mm -hmm. You right. need to bring yourself down a little bit. Or bring yourself up to a certain level before you begin to make some decisions on, for yourself. That's right. Because right. when you're too excited, sometimes you, you wind up not thinking things through properly. Yeah. And you wind up committing to things that you can't follow through with. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Or when you're too angry, you'll say some things mm -hmm. or do some things that you'll later regret. Yeah. I'm learning to just tell people, let me get back with you on that. Mm-hmm. What I'm doing is I'm buying myself some time so I can pray on it and see what the word has to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. There's a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof. What is it? Are the ways of death. You see that? Mm -hmm. A man that follow his own ways, 
The Bible says the ways of death. And we tell you today, don't follow the way of death. Follow God's way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. That's right. No man coming to the Father but by me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Brother Eric, get me uh, Matthew 9. I said 9 and 17. Amen. You see, people don't what 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 we don't want to do, jump up to uh, the 16th verse. Amen. You got to put on Jesus Christ now. And, and the deacon was talking about, Deacon Emmett was talking about earlier about going into the water for baptism. Now, baptism do, do save us. The mm -hmm. scripture says that. Yeah. But what it doesn't do, it does not put away the filth of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's our job. That's our job to do. We have to put away the things that we have taken on. A lot of stuff that we took on, guess what? We learned that from somebody. Mm -hmm. All that smoking and drinking and cussing and all that stuff we done, listen to that world of music, we learned that from somebody. That's right. The way we dress, the way we do things, how we do things, we learned it from someone. And what we have to do is we have to begin to retrain ourselves in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you know, when you begin to retrain yourself in righteousness, it feels different. Mm -hmm. It feels weird. Just be honest about it. You know how it is. You begin to take off those things. You begin to deny yourself and begin to walk in righteousness. It, it felt some kind of way. And I'm going to tell you, that's the way it's supposed to feel. Because when you're making a change, it's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable because you're becoming a new person. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? New, new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things has become what? New. New. Not just some things, but how many things? All, All things, yep. as in uh, Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I think that's Corinthians, Second Corinthians, I believe, five and seventeen, somewhere around there. Amen. 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 Give me, uh, give me some of that uh, five and sixteen, Matthew five and sixteen, brother Eric. Amen. Matthew nine and sixteen. Nine and sixteen. Yes, sir. No man putteth a piece of new cloth. See, see what Jesus began to talk about here. He said, no man put a, a new piece of cloth or garment on what? Onto an old garment. All right. Let's see what he says here. For that which is put in to fill it up, uh -huh. take it from the garment. It takes away. It began to shrink. It began to, when you put something new on something old, it doesn't look right. Yeah. It's almost like having a half painted car. You're going to be able to notice the difference because it's not complete. See, when we begin to try to live our own life and still live with Jesus, it doesn't look right. No. We used to call that uh, straddling the fence or trying to walk two sides of the line. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Because you try to walk that fence. I'm going to tell you, you and men know this. I didn't try to do that kind of stuff. You're going you're gonna to hurt your middle parts. Yep. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. You're right about it. Because you're going to wind up falling and you're going to hurt yourself. Yes, yeah. You either got to get on the Lord's side or, get, or be on the devil's side. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. You right, Amen. man. See, this is what God calling for. He calling for a clean life, not somebody that's just uh, half-hearted. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, when people was following Jesus, they loved Jesus when he was feeding them, and it was okay to get that. It's all right to get the fish and low, but how far are you willing to go? Mm-hmm. Jesus went on and said, if any man doesn't hate his mother and his father, his sister and his brother, he's not worthy to follow me. And people say, I ain't, I ain't denying my family. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If your family has caused you to go astray, you better start denying them because if you don't deny them, Jesus is going to deny you on that great and notable day. That's right. Because what people have done, they have made their family their idol. Yeah. I know I'm telling it right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because what, what your family is trying to do, they're trying to get you to compromise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if your family is in holiness, they're serving God, praise God for that. that it's a blessing to have a family that, that's saved and sanctified. Oh, yeah, that's right. But everybody don't have that. So if you don't have that, Jesus is causing you, is asking you to deny us. Matter of fact, he's not asking you. He's commanding you. Mm -hmm. Jesus don't just ask us. He command us, the ones that serving him. Yeah. All right, give me that 17th verse. This is Matthew uh, 9 and 17. Amen. Uh-huh. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. Y'all see this here? Mm -hmm. See, you're trying to put the Holy Spirit in the old life. No, you can't do it. And, and, and the wine in, in the Old Testament, what they would do in the Old Testament, see why wine is so important. 
in the Bible, and see, what the Bible does, it uses illustrations. In the Old Testament, oil represented the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, wine represented the Holy Spirit. And, and Proverbs talked about the one that was willing to perish, he ought to drink wine. So wine was supposed to make people happy. But God ain't calling for us to drink natural wine like that. But what he calls us to do is to drink of his Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so he's saying here, neither do men put new wine into what? Old bottles. In old bottles. Mm -hmm. And that old bottle is talking about the body of, of, of a person. Mm -hmm. It's talking about who you are. And what, what Jesus is saying, prepare me a house. Prepare me a new bottle mm -hmm. so I can fill you with some new wine. That's right. Because what will happen is, listen, what will happen is, if you try to put new wine in old bottles, what's going to ha happen, Brother Eric? Else the bottles break. It's going to begin to break. Mm -hmm. See, God can't live in two places with you. No. See, the devil, I, was, I said with you, because it ain't just the devil you got to worry about. It's your own self. Right. Yeah. Not just your own self, but it's the world you have to worry about. That's right. See, one of them going to take over. Yeah, that's true. And the pastor used to teach when we first came here, the one you feed is the one that's going to live. That's right. And see, people who say they want to serve God, but they don't want to deny themselves of the world. Mm. You said, my mind is not right. My, I'm having trouble with my mind, but what you eating on? That's right. Are you eating a whole bunch of junk during the week, and then you want to come and shout and praise God and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> You can't do that. No, you can't do you that. You got to serve God every day. You got to have your mind on Jesus every day. That's right. You got to get that fleshly mind out of you and get that, that, that new mind in you. That's right. The mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we do have that mind if we're serving God. That's right. So he says here, neither do men put new wine in, into old bottles, uh -huh. else they, the bottles break. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And the wine runneth out. Who wants to lose what God give you? And you know, I'm going to tell you something. You, you can say what you want. You can quench the spirit now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. for, for, for those of us that are serving God and, and we're, we're saved, we're, we're claiming to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if, you're, if God has been dealing with you on some things, you need to pay attention to that. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says we can grieve the Holy Spirit. And it told us not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. That's right. Not to... Uh, uh, to Cause the, the, the spirit to be put out. Right. Do you know what the word quench means? Mm -hmm. It means to extinguish and to put out. Mm -hmm. Who wants to do that? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But when we don't, if we don't deny ourselves, if we don't begin to put on this new body as Jesus told us to do, that's what we begin to do. That's right. And the wine runneth out. Mm -hmm. And the uh -huh. bottles perish. And the bottles do what? Pairs. Uh huh. But they put new wine into new bottles. This, see, well, this is what they do. This is what we got to do. That's right. So we 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 preserved, we preserved. We sealed until the day of redemption. Yeah. That's right. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah. That's until right. the day of redemption. Yeah. Yeah. But when we do it right, we do both new bottles. Mm -hmm. And then we get that new wine, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That's right. And what happened when we do both? And both are preserved. They did what? Preserved. That's right. Let me show you something else here. Let's go over to, uh, let's go to Luke. Well, you get me, Brother Paul, you get me Matthew 10. Brother, brother, uh, you go over to Luke. Brother Eric, you go over to Luke. We're going to look at something here. You hold 11 and 25, Luke 11 and 25, Brother Eric. Or go up to... <clears throat> the 23rd verse, 11... 11 and 23, Luke 11 and 23. And brother Paul, you get me 10. 10 and 34. This is Matthew 10 and 34. Oh, jump jump up to 32nd verse. Let's see what that says here. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore shall confess me 
before men. See, confessing is part of your your salvation. Mm -hmm. The Bible says to confess with your mouth. Mm -hmm. But also, our confession is how we live. Mm -hmm. your, our greater witness is how we live. Mm -hmm. And he says here, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, what's going to happen? Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. All right, let's see what the Bible say. But whosoever shall deny me before men, you see this? Him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. You'll come up short in the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Not being able to, to, to be ashamed among people. See, a lot of people don't want to serve God all the way because they're ashamed of what Jesus has. What Jesus called for, it, it calls for some self-denial and it because the people begin to mock and laugh at them, they don't want to serve God. You know, one of the, one of the grounds that the seed is planted upon, it talked about uh, the thorns, the, 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 the rocks, right? One of them was burned up because they didn't have enough earth one of them was choked out because of the cares of this world. That's right. The Bible said the one that fell among rocks, it said it grew up for a little while, but it, it began when the sun came up. In other words, when the pressures of life began to hit them, it burned them up. And what, it, what it's talking about, when people begin to ridicule and talk about you because you're following Christ, then you begin to back up. Mm -hmm. You got to get to a point of no return. What I mean is, no matter what comes, you got to keep going for Jesus. Amen. Some of us, we're going to be called to walk away from our family. He said, that sounds kind of harsh, minister. That don't sound right. That doesn't sound like love. It is love. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do for your family is to serve God. That's right. Amen. I'm telling you. Because what you got to do over time, what, what you're going to do, if you stand your ground, the Bible says when a man weighs, please the Lord. Listen to me. When a man weighs, please the Lord, he make even his enemies be at peace with him. That's right. But you don't stand long, long enough for even you to please God for them to be at peace with you. Mm. You be almost on the break of getting your blessing and you back up. Mm -hmm. Don't back up. You got to go all the way. We we on this journey to go all the way. All right, Brother Paul, give me some more of that. Give us chapter and verse where we are. Mm -hmm. Same Matthew 10 and 34. All right, read. Think not that I come to send peace yeah. on the earth. Y'all listening at this real good. See, the peace is supposed to be in us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did, did Jesus, did, do the Holy Spirit give us peace? Amen. Yes. But it's talking about in this context when it comes to relationships, when it comes to us with other people. Let's see what the Bible says here. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. Oh, I thought Jesus came to bring some peace. He did. But let me show you what kind of peace he didn't come to bring. Mm -hmm. I came right. not to send peace. He said, I came not to send peace. But a sword. He began to begin to divide things. Mm -hmm. See, when, when we walk in the way that God wants us to walk in, that new way, it's going to be able to separate us from people that we used to run with. It's going to. Yeah. That sword is going to begin to divide you between you and your bestie, mm -hmm. <laughs> your college buddy. Yeah, that's right. If your college buddy is not serving God, it's time to say goodbye. That's right. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is the Bible says evil communication corrupts what? Good man. If you keep hanging out with those type of people try, trying to say you all right and I'm going to hold what I got and they're going to hold what they got. No, you're not going to do that. No. You got you to find some new friends. What you do, if, if you keep doing that, you really still love the world. That's right. And you don't realize it. That's right. You like what they got. You may not do it, but you still like what they got. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You right about it. You right about it. All right, give me some more of that, Brother Paul. Uh-huh. For I come to set a man at variance against his father. Y'all see that? Mm-hmm. His father is not serving God. You got to leave him alone. This is tight. That's right. Is this Jesus' words or my words? Okay. Are you reading this for yourself? Yeah. I don't believe a lot of people believe this. 
Because what they do, they still try to hang out with people, even in that family, and they talk about they serving God. And then you don't hardly see them at church. Well, my family got this going on. My family, okay. But where God come in at? Mm -hmm. You say you love God, but I don't see you. Mm -hmm. Then when the, when the pastor needs you here, you, you kind of just, just fall off the, off the map. Then you want to show up like everything is all right. But Jesus said, what? I come not to set a man, I come to set a man at variance against his father. Right. And who else? And a daughter against her mother. All right, read. And a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. That don't sound like you're going to be together. And what this talking about, light and darkness do not mix. It's like oil and water. You cannot, I don't try to do this. You can't mix oil and water together. You can't mix the world and yourself and the devil and, and, and God too. No. You just can't do it. Read. And a man's foe shall be day of his own household. Y'all see that? A man's enemy shall be of his own household. So when people get surprised when they when they family turn against them, they, they start uh, getting all surprised like this thing is new. No, Jesus said this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And don't you be surprised. The Bible told us not to be, uh, uh, be so surprised when things begin to overtake us or try to overtake us because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What, what we're doing is we're, we're saying that these people are greater than us, but they're not. That's right. We're supposed to be greater than the one that's in the world. Because we have the one that is greater in us. Mm -hmm. If you if you say you have the spirit of Christ, walk like you have the spirit of Christ. That's right. Walk walk in the authority that God gave you, Amen. not backing up and being ashamed and all this kind of stuff. That's right. Can't be ashamed of Him. Thirty seventh verse. He that loveth father. Y'all listen at me good. He that loveth father. Or mother. This is pretty tight right here. Mm -hmm. I love father. I love my mama. You know why we say mama. And we know what. We just talk about mama all the time. <laughs> Even in the gospel song. They always talk about what mama told me how to pray. What that at? <laughs> he taught you how to pray too. <laughs> Come on somebody. And I heard uh, Minister Boyd told him to say. By his son the other day to, to, to recognize him. <laughs> you should do that. Amen. I, I appreciate that. He taught me well. And he ain't just a breadwinner. No. Bring home the bacon, that's so to speak. He do more than that. What they, what they do, they bring up mama. I get emotional when, I, when they talk about mama. Okay, what about daddy? I, I'm telling you right, folks. Amen. But li listen at me real good here. But it says here, he that loveth a love's father or mother mm -hmm. more than me. Now listen at this real good. What is it? Is not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. Are y'all reading this for yourself? Oh, yeah. Or I'm just preaching my own gospel. Oh, that's it. That's it. Some of us going to have to do this. But you know what? It's all right. Mm-hmm. It's written. Mm -hmm. If you want to be saved, you want to be worthy to follow Jesus, if your mother and father is not serving God, you got to deny them. You know what? And just because you're denying someone for Jesus' sake doesn't mean you mistreat them. As a matter of fact, when you love God, you treat, the best, you pe treat people the best. When you have the love of God in your heart, you know how to even treat your enemies. Mm -hmm. But you don't treat them in such a way where you follow them. Mm -hmm. Because we can love people, but we can love them too much. We can love them more than what God told us to love them. You know that? You can love people too much. If you love them more than God, you loving them too much. That's right. If you loving them to where you follow them in the wrong way, you loving them too much. That's right. Y'all right. didn't know that, did you? Right. He said, if any man love father or mother more than what? More than you, me. If you, loved, if you love your mother and father more than Jesus, you loving them too much. What is he? It's not worthy of me. 
And he that love his son uh -huh. or daughter. I love my children. I love my children. But I love God more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He that love son. Or daughter. Or daughter. More than me. What is it? Is not worthy of me. 38th verse. And he that taketh not his cross. See, it may be a cross for you. Whatever that may be. But if you don't take that cross up, in other words, you don't become a new person, mm -hmm. you're not worthy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He that taketh not his cross. And followeth after me mm -hmm. is not worthy of me. 39th verse. And he and he that findeth his life shall lose it. People are so comfortable now. You know, a lot of people can't serve God because they, they live in comfort. Mm -hmm. They live in too comfortable. And what I mean by that, they say, oh, my life is good. I'm fine. And I don't want to disturb what I have. Mm -hmm. So they see no need to change. And what they do when, they, when he said, if you seek to save your life, in other words, you're trying to save the things of the world and yourself, Jesus said you're going to lose later on. That's right. See, I'd rather lose right now because I'm gonna, I'm gonna win later on. That's right. But what people want, they want it now and later. But it's not gonna work like that with Jesus. He that seek to save his life, he's gonna do what? He's gonna lose it. Mm -hmm. All right, read on. And he that lose, and he that loses his life. He that lose, in other words, he denies himself. He can cleans himself of all filthiness of the flesh for my sake. For his sake. Shall find it. Shall find it. Don't you want to find the Lord today? All right, let's go over to Luke. We're going to ask you to deny yourself today. It's a time to deny yourself of ungodliness and worldly lust. And see, the grace of God did came to bring salvation. But also, it came to teach us mm -hmm. that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's right. See, it ain't just you getting saved and you coming to the altar and, and, and giving your life and, and getting baptized. That is great. That's where you start at. But th Jesus is calling for a life of self-denial. That's right. He, see, this thing, what we have here, it, and we talked about this. See, what, what, what happens to a lot of saints, a lot of people, they begin to become spiritually, spiritually lazy. Mm -hmm. They started off with a good, good fire testimony. They begin to pray and all these things. And over time, the cares of the life, they begin to water down things. They begin to pray less. They, they start slacking up in their church attendance. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what the first thing you do before you stop? You start slowing down. And if you ain't doing nothing, if you ever been in a boat, I haven't been out in the boat before, you know you don't have to do nothing. But if you were to sit in the boat in the middle of the water, you'll begin to drift. Mm -hmm. You ain't just sitting. And, and when, you, when, you, when you're not sitting, if you're not moving in God, you're drifting in the way of the devil. That's right. Because the world has, a, it has like a sinful gravity, gravity pull on you. That's right. Because you have your own flesh that you... You're, you're contending with. And you also have the world and the devil. And if you're not moving forward in God, that stuff again to pull on you. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm telling the truth now. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to be doing nothing, nothing wrong. But if you're not serving God like you're supposed to, that stuff again to take over your life. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, take heed to yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and even the apostle said, take heed to the, yourself. Yeah. Lest at any time these things slip. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can let them slip. Yeah. Getting slack. That's right. Don't get slack. Amen. Press in. Amen. Press forward. Yes. I feel some kind of way. Okay. I feel some kind of way sometimes too. <laughs> let's go. Let's let's serve God. That's right. Amen. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it sometimes too. <laughs> but let's go. <laughs> right. It's time to serve God. You can't go by how you feel. That's right. You got to go how Jesus told you to do. Yeah. Yes. And what I found out when we press into what God told us to do, the feeling will come later on. That's right. Then you feel like pressing on. Mm -hmm. You feel like going on in Jesus' name. 
Yeah. But, you know, sometimes we, we get tested in our trials yeah. with our own selves. We, we kind of say, well, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like going today. Well, that's your test. Mm -hmm. Go on anyhow. Amen. And then what happened there, you said you were like, I'm glad I came today. I feel good. Yeah. That's See, true. if you went by how you felt, you would have missed your blessing. You, yeah. can't go, you can't go by how you feel. I know I got it right. You right. You right, bro. Brother Eric, what you holding? 11? What you holding? 11 and 23. 11 and 23. Y'all got that? Amen. You got to say amen. Amen. We talked about self. Denial. Now jump up to the... Uh, go up to the 21st verse. Amen. Mm -hmm. When a strong man... Armed, keepeth his power. See what what we what we looked at as a strong person. When we are serving God, we have the Holy Spirit. We're strong, and we're we're doing the things we're supposed to do. We're strong, mm -hmm. and we on God. Yeah. The Bible say, "Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to do what." Stand. Stand. See, if the good if the good man would have known the hour that the thief was coming, he would have suffered not his house to get broken into. That's right. You know what happened when people are not watching? The devil slips up on them. Yeah. Well, you're not watching like you're supposed to. You're not praying like you're supposed to. You're not coming to church like you're supposed to. You're not reading the scriptures like you're supposed to. The devil comes up on you. The flesh comes up on you and begin to take over you. But I want to tell you, don't be like that. Be like this good armed soldier. Stay on guard in your palace. In other words, stay on guard of your life. Mm. When a strong man is armed, keep his palace. His goods are in peace. His, his goods are at peace. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm going to take back what the devil stole from me. The devil don't have no business stealing nothing from you. Y'all yep. hear what I say? Amen. Mm -hmm. Why are you letting the devil take what you had? Jesus didn't let the devil take what he had. No. Amen. 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 The Bible says you stay on guard, keep your palace. And his goods are at peace, are in peace. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. But uh, what? When it's stronger than he shall come upon him. Yes. And overcome him. Uh-huh. He taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted. And when he when he mean by that, when you let somebody stronger than you, in other words, you let the world get stronger than what you have in God, it begins to take you over. But remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You stand strong, you stand armed with the armor of God, and you won't let this strong one come in and take you over. And I'm going to tell you why this happened. I'm going to show you a few scriptures down. I'm going to tell you why this happens. People are not focused on the Spirit of God. When we don't focus on the Spirit of God, that is where the power is. Didn't the Bible say you shall receive what? Power. power. You need power when you are dealing with an enemy. That's right. Not your own power. You got to get God's power. Mm -hmm. All right, read on here. He that is not with me mm -hmm. is against me. Is against me. And he that gathereth not mm -hmm. with me scattereth. He scattereth. Mm -hmm. All right. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. See, what we can do sometimes, there's some situations where people don't change and they want the spirit of God. They want to follow God. That's wrong. Another thing people do, they begin to clean themselves up, but they don't begin to fill themselves with the Holy Spirit. Right. And when I say begin to fill themselves with the Holy Spirit, they don't focus on God's word. They don't live out God's word as he told us to, to, to do, because the Bible says here that the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, read. When the unclean spirit Mm -hmm. He's gone out of a man. When the devil's gone out of a person. He walketh through dry places. This is the spirit, that, that evil spirit, that unclean spirit. He began to walk through dry places. Seeking rest. He can't find rest. See, the devil don't make us do stuff. He got to be in us. And he began to, to, to make us do things in a way that we begin to carry it out if we don't have God in our lives. That's right. Read. And finding none, mm -hmm. he said. What did he say? I will return it to my house once I came out. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. You can't play around with the devil. See, when you clean yourself up from filthiness of the flesh, 
It's tied to focus on the Spirit of God. All you do is ask him for it. If you repent it and you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Jesus asked us to do that. I'm going to show you too. We're going we're gonna to see what he said. All right, let's, let's see what the Bible says here. Read on here. And when he cometh. And when he cometh. He findeth it swept and garnished. This is, the, this is that evil spirit. This is the devil. That person that he came out of. See, when God bring you out of something, don't go back to that. That's right. Move forward. See, the danger of, of, of not doing anything, just, just coming to church, clean yourself up. The danger of you not working in righteousness, you're going to allow the devil to come back and get it back in, into you. This is what Jesus is talking about here. That's right. All right, read. Then goeth he uh -huh. and take it to him seven other spirits. See, the problem when you do this, it ain't just him coming back. That's right. The Bible says he brings in seven more spirits. Uh -huh. And the problem with this also is what? They are what? More wicked than himself. They're more wicked. You think you was in a bad situation before you came to God? Mm. If you don't focus on the spirit of God, you're going to be worse than you was before. That's right. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yep, focus in. That's right. Take it upon him, seven. Seven other spirits uh -huh. more wicked than himself. More wicked than himself. And what's, what Jesus say? And they enter in. What, what happened? And dwell there. They dwell there. Uh -huh. And the last state of that man. Y'all see that? Is worse than the first. You'll wind up doing some stuff you've never done before. That's why we tell you don't be lazy, spiritually lazy. It's dangerous. Don't be half-hearted in God. Be serious and go all the way in. Because the Bible says your latter state is going to be worse than your first. Mm -hmm. right. While God giving you opportunity, the Bible says the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart right. as he did in the day of provocation. Yield to God. That's right. Yield to his spirit. Yield to his word. Brother Paul, you get in the same book there. You jump up to uh, the 10th verse. Getting ready. Or, or jump up to the, the 8th verse here. I'm going to show you. Some of us, just, you say you're waiting on God. You need to ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord, repent, get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, obey his word, and ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit, and he'll do it. God cannot lie. He wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. 11 and 8. Luke 11 and 8. Amen. Mm -hmm. I say unto you, mm -hmm. though he will not rise and give him, because he is a fr because he is his friend, mm -hmm. yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he's needed. So a friend came in in the middle of the night asking for for bread, and the Bible says that you know sometimes you, when you when you're in the middle of doing something, sleeping or something like that, you tend to turn things away because of the the time. But the Bible says because that friend was so uh, uh, persistent. Uh, the Bible says that that friend began to give him what he asked for. And Jesus is making this illustration concerning his spirit. All right, let's read on here. And I say unto you. Now, Jesus, now he's going to say, I say unto you. Ask. Uh, ask. And it shall be given you. You should be asking for the for God's spirit. You should seek, seek for God's spirit. Uh-huh. Seek. What's going to happen? And you shall find. You'll find it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Knock. Knock. And it shall be open unto you. Uh huh. We, we're going to talk about, see what Jesus talked about in this scripture. He's not just talking about anything. Because some people think you just ask for anything. I, more I get closer to God, I realize we can't ask God for anything. I don't want to ask God for anything. What I mean by that, there's some things that you may ask for is not God's will. Some things that we, we think we want is it, it's going to be more of a hurt to us than a help. If it's going to be more of a hurt to you, you don't need it. If it's going to cause you to, uh, to deny what God has, you don't need that. But what Jesus is talking about asking and you shall be given or seek and you shall find, he's going to tell you what he's talking about. 
Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What? For everyone that asketh, receive it. Mm -hmm. And he that seeketh, findeth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Mm -hmm. If a son shall ask bread of any of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? No, he asked a good question here. He said, you as a natural father, if your son, if your son or your child asks you a, a, a bread, will you, will you give him a, a stone? Of course not. Read on. Or if, or if he asks a fish, mm -hmm. will he give a fit? Will he give for a fish him a serpent? Do you give a, a person to ask uh, this person a fit uh, a serpent if they ask for a fish? No. All right, read on. Or if he sh or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? And all these things, Jesus, are, are, these are rhetorical questions. They answer themselves, and the answer to all these questions is no. Now he's going to say what he really wants to say in the thirteenth verse. What? If you then, uh -huh. being evil, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Y'all see that? That's right. Yeah, do y'all see that for yourself? Oh yeah, that's right. You have to ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit, not just one time. Ask Him daily. Even if you have the Holy Spirit, ask God to renew in you the right yes. spirit. Yes. Give you a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Yes. Fill me with your Holy Spirit every day. Because yes. what happens when things sit up too long, they get stale. Right? The, the light, the cares of life begin to stale us out. And that's why we need God to refill us. And guess what? He'll do it. Amen. Seeking you say what? Fine. Fine. Knocking, it shall be what? Open. Open unto you. Mm -hmm. Eric, let's go. This is going to be our last scriptures here. Let's go to Ephesians. Fifth chapter. And let's look at 5 and 13. Let's just read down through there. Amen. Mm -hmm. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. All right. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. That's God's word. Mm -hmm. it, it shines the light on the things that are wrong. That's right. And that's a good thing. That is a good thing. All right, read. Wherefore he said, mm -hmm. Awake thou that sleepeth. You got to wake up. Mm -hmm. You gotta wake up from your sleep. In That's other right. words, wake up out of that darkness. That's right. Come out of that 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 sin business, mm -hmm. as they say. Wake, wake up, thou that sleepest. Uh huh. And arise from the dead. And what'll happen? And Christ shall give thee light. He give you His Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That light is His Word and His Spirit. But you know what? Before you before you got it, before you get His Spirit and His His Word, you got to wake out of out of darkness. That's right. You can't have both of them. Mm -mm. You try to be asleep and get his Holy Spirit at the same time. In other words, you try to walk in darkness and walk in the light at the same time. It just ain't going to work. No. It, it would not work. Just wake up out of sleep and arise from the dead. That's right. And Christ shall give thee light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See then that then, you. Then amen. he says, see then. That you walk circumspectly. See, this is what people get hung up at. They get hung up on the experience of being filled with God's spirit. But the Bible says, see then that you do what? Walk circumspectly. You walk continually wisely. Amen. Walk circumspectly, not as a what? Not as fool. Not as a fool. But as wise. Amen. That's right. Why should you do this? Do what? Redeeming the time. You, what you're doing, you're buying back that time you say you lost in the world. When you walk wisely, you walk like God told you to do, mm -hmm. you begin to redeem the time. That's right. In other words, you make good use of your time now. That's right. This is what we talk about self-denial right here. This is following, following Jesus, taking up your cross mm -hmm. and following Jesus. And you know what? When you do that, when we do this, when we take up our cross and follow Jesus, 
there's no other greater thing than to be filled with his spirit. Amen. And for those that that's filled with his spirit, isn't it great and yes. wonderful to have God's spirit living on the inside? Oh, man, it feels great. You feel at rest. You feel peaceful. Mm -hmm. Huh? I know I got it right. That's Amen. right. You, you feel a sense of freedom. That's right. The Bible says where the, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That's, right. That's freedom. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. You, you got to watch out because the days are evil. That's right. All right, read. Wherefore, be not unwise. Now, don't be unwise. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. You got some, you know what? Some things people think God is going to drop everything in their lap like this. Well, I'm waiting on God. He's going to show me. And you don't do nothing. The Bible says, be not unwise, but know what the will of the Lord is. You got to go seek it out. That's right. Then Jesus said, seek, and you what? You yeah. shall find. You don't do nothing every day. Bishop say nothing from nothing leaves nothing. That's right. We got we got a lot of lazy people now nowadays. Mm -hmm. They spiritually lazy. Yeah. Hey Amen. I got to say this today. That's right. You can't be spiritually lazy and say you want to be filled with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get off that stool or do anything or do nothing. Yeah. And start working. Yeah. And you say you don't know what to do, do do something, whatever you'll find, you find your hands to do, do it. Do it all your might. That's right. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, mm -hmm. but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. Read. And be not drunk with wine, mm -hmm. wherein is excess. But do what? But be filled with the Spirit. That's present tense. That's right. You got to stay filled with the Spirit. Not one time, you got to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Can't watch every show. That's right. No. You can't be searching the internet all the time. That's right. No. Because some stuff pop up on the internet that ain't right for your eyes. That's right. Even if you're not attending to look at that. That's right. And if it pops up, you exit out of there and go on about your business. That's right. That's true. The Bible says flee fornication. That's, That's right. right. There's some stuff we, we we put ourselves in those situations and we say, I don't feel God. I, I don't feel connected. <laughs> you got disconnected by the things you're looking at That's and the right. things you listen to. That's right. Amen. Listen to the right things. Yeah, that's right. Follow the pastor. Oh, yeah. Follow your leaders. Yeah. Listen to gospel music. Mm -hmm. Rejoice. Yeah. Rejoice in your home. That's right. Rejoice on your job. Yeah, do what your boss tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Don't be like them folks at the job always grumbling and mumbling about everything. Always get in this little office and drinking coffee around the coffee pot talking about folks. Mm -hmm. And you sitting there joining in with them and you know before you know it, you just said something that you shouldn't say. And a lot of times they go back and tell what the boss, what you said. Yeah, that's true. And then the boss looking at you. Yeah. If you've done that, don't do it again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You set an example. You be thankful and say, man, this job, this job, this job is no good. I don't like this job. Man, I'm thankful, man. I'm, I'm glad I got me a job, man. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I got a great job, man. Mm -hmm. You know, when folks, when you start doing that kind of stuff, they don't want to be around you. That's right. They don't like him. He, he, he always opposite of what I'm saying. I'm supposed to be opposite of what you're saying. I'm delight. Yeah. I can't follow you. You supposed to be following what I have. That's right. Because the Bible says, don't be as a fool, but wise. Mm -hmm. Redeeming the time, for the day is evil. That's right. Be not drunk with wine, where is excess, but be filled with the what? Spirit. With spirit. the spirit. Mm -hmm. How you do that? Speak it to yourselves in Psalms. Yes, yeah, speak to yourselves in Psalms. You need to remember some of these Psalms. Mm -hmm. You need to go in there and read the book of Psalms. Because this is how you're going to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You ought to be saying that to yourself. Right. You ought to say those things that, that the Psalms talked about. Mm -hmm. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Uh huh. And hymns. And hymns. Get, find you some hymns. What we were singing today was a hymn. That's yes, right. Lord. That's a hymn. Yeah. Yes. You know why people feel good when they sing that song? Because it got the spirit in it. That's right. That's why it make you cry and make you shout and dance because the spirit is in it. 
You got to sing those songs so you can stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hymns. And spiritual songs. And find some spiritual songs. That's right. Doing what? Singing. Singing. And making melody in your heart. Making melody in your heart unto who? To the Lord. Unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And doing what? Giving thanks always. Giving thanks always. Always for all things, for all things unto God, unto God and the Father, and the Father in the name of our Lord, and Jesus do it all Christ. in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that all right today? Oh yeah. Can we give the Lord a hand praise today? Amen. And we do want to say to you, uh, we appreciate you tuning in live with us here at Words of Life True Church of God in Christ, where we preach and teach the apostles' doctrine. And we teach the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And we ask that you come back and join us. We'll be here if the Lord willing. We'll be here on Wednesday night at 730. If you watch, you've been watching this for a while, come out to the service. That's right. Come, come and hear us. Come in person. I'm telling you, if you come and hear what we got, we, we, we believe we have love over here. We do our best to follow the scriptures according to where it's written. And we try to teach it in context according to the spirit. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until we meet again. Thank you.